Hi, so step number one. Some people would think just pick the phone up and dial. I don't think that's that effective. I, I What I would suggest you do do, though, is maybe put a bit of preparation in. Uh, I was in the Boy Scouts when I was very young, uh, and obviously our motto was be prepared. Learned quite a bit from that. Then later on in life, uh, my first big job was uh, working in hotel management. And as part of my course, we had to train to be chefs. Before we did any cooking, we had to do a preparation. That was called mise en place. You'll see all the chefs on the television when they've got to go, right, I've got three eggs, I need five ounces of this and ten ounces of that and three of them and one of them. And surprise, surprise, it's all laid out there in front of them. No doubt by some poor wee runner in the TV studio. But you go into a proper kitchen, that's exactly what you'll see. The preparation is already there for the chefs. That's mise en place. Mise en place, be prepared. In our case, pre-call preparation. Before you pick the phone up, there's a number of things that you need to do. Uh, so, as part of the ultimate sales call, understandably, step number one is pre-call preparation. So, you might ask yourself the question, why bother? Why bother indeed? Well, there's a number of reasons why you should do it. It certainly makes you a lot more professional. You certainly come across a lot more professional rather than stumbling over your words or trying to remember who you're talking to or who the client is or whether they bought from you before. If you don't sound too professional, there's going to be a chance that people aren't going to spend that money with you. Why would they trust you with their business? Next thing that you think about is it gives you some customer info, insight. If you start looking into the customer, you might already have the customer as an existing uh, client. So obviously you can look into their back uh, profile to find out what they've bought from you in the past. What numbers have they bought from you? What price have they bought from you? Uh, you could maybe also use a CRM system, a customer relationship management system. Uh, everything from a simple Excel spreadsheet to index cards to a proper uh, customer customer easy for me to say customer relationship management tool where you've got a full breakdown of the whole history the whole email campaign everything you've talked to them about every phone call that you've had everything that they bought from you, you've got everything saved in one place you could also then sort of look at make sure you know what you're talking about make sure you've got that product knowledge that service that you provide those customers. That tends to happen in induction courses, of course. But if you want to be on the ball, you've got to be keeping up to date with what new products are online, what new things are available on your website. If somebody asks you about your new range of double flange conflomigrators, do you know what they're talking about? Have you got these things already and all prepared? Do you have that product knowledge that you're able to display? If you know that, it means that you can then focus on the customer conversation and look for rapport builders, listen out for buying signals, uh, anticipate objections. We're going to look at a lot of these later on. But it means that if you're not having to think about how much is that, what size is that, what length is that, it means you can focus on the conversation, which is much, much more important. Something else to think about. Think about how you're going to maximise your success. Think about what are you doing well. Think about previous calls that you've had. I'm going to come to a model I've used for 20, 30 years uh, since I worked at Coca-Cola and my old boss, Robert Cayley, um, came out of a call while he was observing me as all good managers do and as we get into the car he said what's your MLD now I'll come into this in much more detail but basically quite simply it stands for what could you have done more of what could you have done less of and if you had to do that call again what are you going to do differently I do it at the end of every training course I encourage people who are on my course to think about what they could do more less differently what's their MLD so reflect back in what you've done. And the more you do that, the more you're going to get better on it. It is still part of the pre-call preparation, but it's certainly something that you should be doing on a very regular basis so you're more successful more of the time. Next thing, it develops your confidence. If you know what you're doing, know what you're saying, you're getting the sales in, it multiplies. You'll often see the best salespeople keep getting the sales where the people are really struggling, lose their confidence, 
they're not as good on the call, they lose the conversations, they, re they don't remember things, they lose opportunities. So certainly preparation is, is certainly going to help you develop that confidence. Give yourself a call objective. Some people jump onto a call and think, I want to get a sale here. If you're doing 20 calls a day, 10 calls a day, 50 calls a day, I've known people that have done 120 calls a day. And every call they go on to, I want to get the sale here, and they don't get it. And then they go on to the next call, I want to get the sale here, and they don't get it. It chips away at their confidence. So what I would suggest you do is set yourself three levels. Like, intend, must. What would I like to get out of this call? A sale. The start of a relationship. A great conversation. Become the go-to person for that customer. That's what you'd like to do. What do you intend to do? I intend to find out about the customer's needs. I intend to present some potential solutions that we've got. It might not be the right time, but you intend to come across as well as you possibly can be. And the last one, um, for must. What must you do? I must come across professional. I must come across if I know what I'm talking, to, I'm talking about. I must be able to explain who I am and why I'm calling. Might not have a good time to speak to them. But at the very least, you must be able to give them that confidence in you that you can go back at a later date and repitch. Or they ask you to call back later in the week or later in the month. So that's the why bother. What are some of the things that you can actually do to plan for your next call? A number of things. Know your product inside now. We've already talked a wee bit about product knowledge, but make sure you know everything about your product. You never know what's coming up in the call. Something else. Identify your target market. Who is your target market? Is it businesses? Is it public sector? Is it big corporates? Is it small to medium enterprises? Is it one-man operators? Then narrow that down. You might go, my market is insurance. You might then go, okay, fine, what type of insurance? There's a lot of insurance out there. There's pensions, that's insurance. You, but you might go, no, I'm, I'm just focused on home insurance. That's probably a bit of a niche. That narrows it right down. But then who are you actually speaking to? Who are you actually talking to? Have somebody in mind when you're speaking to them at the other end of that call. I've got some type of person in mind when I'm looking down this camera. It's called having an avatar. Who are they? What do they look like? How old are they? Are they professional? Are they formal? Are they informal? Are they chatty? Are they great rapport builders? Who are they? What do they look like? And what are they looking for? There are some generalities, but the more specific you can get, the better you're going to be. Think about the questions you're going to ask. Now, obviously, we're going to do a full step on needs analysis and the questions that you should be asking. But get yourself a library of questions. Think about some things that you should be saying to the customer, questions you should be asking. Rather than just making it up as you're going along. Think about what are you going to ask. And know why you're asking the questions. I've observed two salespeople, one sitting beside each other. They both ask similar questions. One's successful, one's not successful. Why? Because the one that's asking the, some of the questions knows why he's asking them. The other one thinks, I've got no idea why I'm asking that, but I heard the guy beside me asking it last week. Must be a good question because he got a sale out of it. So sometimes people will steal questions from others. Sometimes people get coached. Ask them this. Okay, I'll ask them that. Why? Don't know. So ask the, think about know why you're asking certain questions. And more importantly, what are you going to do with the answers that you're given? If you ask question A, you're probably going to get a range of number of questions, a number of answers that you may get back from. What are you going to do with that answer? Are you just going to take a note of it? Are you going to let it take you in a certain direction? What are you actually doing? Mindset is huge. So de develop yourself a positive mental state. 
we've all had days when we've gone into work and I've gone, oh, I'm just, I'm on a burst couch today. I'm just not into this. I just don't know why I'm bothering. Especially if the sailors are drying up. You need to shake that off. You need to have a, a word. As we say in Glasgow, you need to have a word with yourself. You need to develop some strong mental attitudes when you're actually speaking the call. If you set yourself that objective of, I'm going to get a sale here. If you don't get the sale, as I mentioned already on, when I get into the like and tend must, you're not successful. You don't have anything to go. You don't have any success at all. It is going to affect your mental state. What about setting personal objectives? What are you going to do? What is going to be successful for you? Now, maybe before the call, there's a couple of things you could be doing. You need to start trying to identify the customer's needs. You need to find, find out what's important to them. They know what they want. They know what they need. They know what they already have. They know what they paid for it as well. On the other hand, you have your product knowledge. You've got a whole range of product knowledge and what you do and how you do it, what, what you have and what you can do with it, how it might be appropriate for some clients, some more so than others. As you start asking strong, good, uh, strong questions, good questions, you start identifying what's important to that customer's need. The customer starts finding out a wee bit about you and what you have to have available. You start building common ground. You ask a bit more, you find out a bit more, they find out a bit more about you. That common ground grows. And hopefully by the end of the call, you have a successful outcome for both parties. Now that model is certainly nothing new, where you've got one party, another party, and they almost sort of merge and they grow into each other. And then you've got that successful outcome. That's known as the Johari's window. Johari's window, J-O-H-A-R-I. You could go and search it, but you've got a sound enough understanding about what you're actually doing. So that's the end of step number one. What we're going to do is we're going to move into step number two, IFA, and all will be revealed in the next section.